afternoon. Hi, I'm Ricky Cassidy. This is Think Tech Politics and Land. Uh, it was a show started by a very good friend of mine, Dennis Sazaki, one of the uh, more beloved people on Kauai, uh, good friend, great surveyor, um, fine mind. And he would go all over the place with his uh, guests. I am going to do the same with my guest today, Carlo Morales, who I've known. For three years, he came to me asking me to do a study on affordable housing. And if I look at the pantheon of my clients, um, Carlos is right up there uh, in terms of being inquisitive. Uh, for that reason, um, I've invited him to come and talk to me, uh, meaning uh, I talk, he listens. Uh, but the background I'd like to uh, emphasize is that He's younger than almost all of my clients. He might be the youngest. And uh, he's persistent. He's got two portable projects up and running on the Big Island. Um, and uh, for that, I find uh, remarkable. Um, in setting this thing up, uh, you have to put a title to this. And uh, the title I chose was Awards and Rewards of Affordable Housing, the awards being really the hard thing to do in terms of um, getting um, through that step of getting your, your tax credits. Uh, the rewards, um, however, are, are spread uh, deep and, and wide amongst those of us that do it, and particularly those of uh, our community who live in affordable housing. So with that, I got Carlos to shake his, to nod his head. I'll let him turn over. You want to <laughs> help me with this? Absolutely, and good afternoon. Thanks uh, for the opportunity to be here with you. You want to tell us how you got started, what led you, uh, what of your background? I know you're a pain in the, uh, I mean, I know you're persistent. Um, <laughs> so whatever you can share that has to do with um, persevering in a, in a very rocky field. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and, and thanks again. Um, uh, I started off on uh, capital formation, uh, mainly uh, international financing on the equity side and was involved with different developers, uh, hospitality, and then eventually senior care. And seeing the difference in senior care development where it has a, a social impact uh, is what led to uh, now affordable housing in the light tech space and in the, in the workforce space. So we're certainly uh, deeply rooted in the mission of affordable housing. The beauty of this industry too is everybody that's involved, uh, whether it be the lenders or the consultants, everybody understands the need for affordable housing. And uh, we're, we're blessed to be in this uh, arena with everybody else. Uh, you've come a long way. Uh, the first project you did was on the Kona side. The second was on Hilo side. I imagine the, um, uh, whereas the communities are slightly different, the, the need is deep island-wide. Um, yes. Any, I think you started out on, on Kona. Do you wanna kind of characterize uh, to some extent that start, the, that community um, and what you found there and how you did it? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for Kona, it's really dear to my heart, um, especially, you know, our family moving over here uh, back in 2004 and my mother being diagnosed with uh, breast cancer and really seeing firsthand how uh, fragile our community can be in, in different aspects. Um, but the beauty of that story, uh, along with her um, survival and, and, and strength to uh, go through that battle was that a there was a community that stepped up to us, stepped up to support her, stepped up to support us as a family. Uh, some community members that we didn't know, some community members that um, didn't have anything and they were still willing to give to others. And so that was really the, the foundation to the focus on concentrating in Kona for our first affordable project. Uh, we were blessed to be awarded a, a LITEC award for that project. Uh, 107 apartments. Um, uh, the administration here at Hawaii County has been amazing from the mayor down, uh, Susan Coons, the housing administrator, um, director um, Kern in the planning department and the countless other 
individuals that are just sort of in the background of champions of ours, you know, in the different levels of the planning department, the building department, the water department. I mean, it really takes a community as a whole uh, to be successful. And um, so we're very proud of that project. And then obviously we took that momentum and, and started the Hilo project. What I'm hearing that is interesting, um, two things. One, community. Um, and I, I'll come back to that because the community is what we all look out on and, and uh, uh, participate in. And, and um, But before I go there, can you kind of explain how you got awarded, what you put together, what are the key um, items, where did you focus your um, energy, what skills did you did you need? Uh, getting land, of course, was one. Yeah, we we were uh, blessed to have um, you know a landowner that uh, gave us reasonable terms on on our site control to be able to do the project and. You know, our our conversations with landowners are in collaboration in the spirit of doing good for the community. And so we've had an overwhelming um, support from different landowners in that respect. Um, but yeah, site control starts the project. Uh, obviously, the development team and the alliance of partners that we have to check off the different boxes of the different requirements for uh, being able to propose a project. Um, and then going through the entitlement process, the rezone process, uh, obviously, obviously the application process through HFTC and the different um, requirements that are uh, in that uh, application and exhibit list that you need to fulfill um, is quite extensive and very complex. And so um, it's just not me that's you know part of the, the joint venture team that, um, that's putting this together, have great partners. Uh, that are here supporting us. Um, some are outside of Hawaii, and so they they recognize the need uh, here in Hawaii, and uh, we've been you know successful in and uh, those applications. Uh, let's focus on land for uh, for a sec because that that's that is the, uh, the building block, the first step. And on top of that, um, you have to have an owner that's willing to. Uh, maybe take a risk um, and, or maybe take lower reward. Uh, you see that every now and then that really good people do try and, and um, uh, take lower uh, than what market is. Um, for instance, on Kauai, you can see that they uh, um, there's people that have Ohani units that are willing to um, rent to their friends at below market rates. But uh, since this is a, um, a program about politics and land, uh, I had to kind of salute that. Um, that would be one thing. Um, when, you've done two deals in, in both cases uh, was um, the end use that you gave to the landowner when you wanted to buy it, um, recognized, appreciated, and, and in a sense rewarded. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, our our objective is to create win wins across the board. You know, uh, our success uh, is the landowner's success at some juncture of time, and the success of the project is a win for the county. And, and ultimately, the reason why we do what we do is to create the win for our community. Um, and so, Kona being uh, designated as a low poverty area which shows a, a more significant need for, um, you know, low income housing. Um, it, it created a great opportunity to be able to create the wins, win wins for everybody that's involved in the process. Then um, how about the political community? Because uh, to my ears and my, my, my mind, um, you're in the private sector, but you're partnering uh, with, um, the public sector, um, you deal with any number of public servants. Uh, and in this case, I would um, suggest, and, and, and I'm sure you'll validate, they're out to help you. And by help you, they, they are your intellectual capital partners. They're your um, goodwill uh, purveyors. Um, and it's, it, it, it is a give and take type thing. So. Absolutely. Uh, when they talk about this, um, are, are there any considerations that they provide you, insights that you provide 
uh, you get provided uh, anything from how to do it better, how to do more of it, um, shortcuts, long, um, long thoughts, and anybody in the government that's helped you that you can think of? Yeah, I mean, from, from the very top, uh, Mayor Roth um, and his accessibility uh, to take meetings and to discuss different topics. And uh, obviously, you know, this is centered around affordable housing. And so that's a big initiative for him. Uh, Susan Kuntz, who is the housing administrator, uh, very accessible, uh, has, you know, um, uh, both uh, time in Kona and Hilo to be accessible. And uh, again, going back to the different directors that we deal with, uh, a big one being Director Kern for, from the planning department. Um, I can't speak, um, I, there's, there's so much I can, I, I can say about them individually. There's a heart and passion to, um, to do more affordable housing over here. And, um, and uh, I would say that Big Island is open for uh, affordable housing development and uh, the people that are in charge at the different levels and, and the people on the ground that are uh, that are helping the process uh, through the different departments. Anytime that we're talking about affordable housing, we got their full attention. And oftentimes, you know, the the most critical uh, needs is just to have somebody answer the phone call and and get the the troops together and let's get into a room <laughs> and let's talk through the certain dynamic. And so, um, you know, I, I view the the county of Hawaii and the leadership. Uh, in, from my experience, as a team that is on the same side of the fence as us, which our goal is to give back to our community with the much needed affordable housing and um, and and tackle it on a, on a day to day basis. But everybody's accessible, one phone call away, um, responses to emails, and that can be really, really critical at, at, at times when you need to get answers figured out and and re, you know passed on to the team and and just move the ball and get it done. We've talked about moving the ball in affordable housing, but we've also gone up in terms of uh, cost of housing, more expensive housing. Uh, we've gone down in less expensive housing. We've looked at different forms. Um, the intellectual challenge uh, is to satisfy all levels. Uh, because they are um, connected, interconnected. So a, a solution at one can be helped at the other. Usually um, most spoken of, um, if you do market rents, then that may open up some affordable rentals. And then if you do above market rents, which is uh, inexpensive condos, that opens it up. And uh, that, that connection um, goes up and down. Um, and uh, the, it's not just intellectual challenge. It's, it's, it's uh, putting the capital together, knowing what kind of money is available for what, but then on top of that, knowing the cost of, of production. And, and um, uh, tell me, as, as, as you've gone along, has anything really struck you? Um, and if you want to elaborate the salient piece of, of uh, say, homeless housing, uh, or another piece, please share that with people so that they can kind of see what it's like to toil in this field. Yeah, I think uh, one um, comment I would uh, that resonates that you said is, you know, basically the supply and demand of housing and uh, each level of housing is needed in our community. And when one is done, it open up, opens up the opportunity for those to move up into a different level of affordable housing or just housing in general. So as we focus on the mission of affordable housing and we look at the, the different levels of affordable housing, you know, the 30, 30 to 60% AMI for LIHTC, you know, uh, something that's in the 80 to 115% for our central workers and workforce, you know, what does that look like for rental? What does that look like for a for sale product? And, uh, and then you look at the lower end of the spectrum for housing, uh, maybe tied to emergency uh, shelter, to temporary shelter. If we don't have supportive housing, you know, in the permanent, you know, sort of section of affordable housing and, you know, permanent housing above that in different AMIs, then we get bottlenecked. And so, you know, I'm a champion of all our different affordable developers that are 
uh, you know, here in the state of Hawaii, there's some that are from other states and, you know, we're in the fight together um, in a friendly competition way, obviously, but, you know, the goal is to provide more affordable housing in our community. And as a whole, we need more uh, development teams out there to be proactive in the conversation um, so that we can provide, you know, more housing, you know, for our people. So it's, um, it's a very extensive conversation, very complex. Um, again, our focus is affordable housing at any level um, and have taken bits and pieces from a lot of different mentors and, and uh, conversations that we had from other development teams who are doing amazing things. And again, I welcome them to the Big Island. I support them 100% and, I, and anything I could do to help them, I'm, I'm just a phone call away as well. The one thing I do love about you is that you will go to uh, go across the Pacific Ocean, stop in California for a while. You told me stories of Texas brought back uh, Texas and affordable housing developer and um, the conversations we enjoyed over dinner were how he works with the public sector exclusively and that's uh, his big success. And um, uh, it's a bigger pond, it's a bigger thing and, and you can take those uh, and reapply them uh, elsewhere, um, dovetailing on on um, the goodwill or and, and the friendliness amongst developers, uh, some of the ones that I know that have been around the longest, in particular Stanford Car, was always helpful. And he, he would say, "When I'm successful, we all are successful." And he formed some great relationships. Craig, Craig Potassi is another one, although he can't play guitar, he thinks he's a country rock. Star, but, um, but he is a Green Bay Packers fan, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. um, it takes a community, and and back um, uh, back to that whole thing. Um, I'd like to go to uh, one of the things that struck me about the Big Island in terms of the signs of the acuteness of the lack of shelter are all the people live in Hilo who drive over uh, the hill takes them an hour, hour and a half. They get there. Uh, in the dark, and they sleep in their car, uh, yep. parked up and down um, the major highways and thoroughfares. And uh, just seeing that uh, sparked something in, in um, my mind, which was somewhat akin to um, homelessness. Uh, I think it was Seattle that had the model of starting with uh, just places where the homeless can come and store some stuff, take some showers, have hygiene, something that would root them. And I thought, uh, also, that that could be the same uh, model that would apply to um, uh, all those people waiting every morning uh, in the dark to wake up in their car and then drive to work. Um, yes. Any thought of that? You know, uh, any? It's the first time I've discussed it with you. So. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, the first thought I have is Project Vision Hawaii, and and they have a, a mobile. Uh, trailer for showers that goes around the island and I think on each island now um, and so you know they're serving that demographic uh, in that in that way uh, but going back to Stanford Carr and and that uh, example of uh, those individuals that are sleeping in their cars you know waiting to go to work uh, at the resorts uh, his project that's tied to workforce right there in Waikoloa is is a perfect uh, example of a great product and a great development team that is is putting um, the, their daily attention to providing that affordable uh, housing. Um, we need more, you know, and so we're trying our best uh, with our team and, and our alliance of partners. And as I mentioned, supportive of all the other different developers that are out there trying to do the same thing. And collectively, I think all of us, uh, as we engage in this conversation amongst ourselves internally with other development teams, with the county, the state officials, um, it's, you know, I, I think the best way to, you know, to, to get to that end result, which is obviously providing more affordable housing. Yeah, I think it, it, it rolls. It, it, you know, you don't know where to start, but it, it, if you're successful, it'll spread up and down and outward. Um, the one thing, jumping way down the income spectrum that I've seen uh, that did uh, change my mind was the way that the uh, on Oahu on the west side, uh, there was a um, congregation of, of, of local people who were without shelter and one in their community um, 
uh, went out that they all kind of gravitated around Waianae Boat Harbor, which had showers and bathrooms. Uh, and one of them, um, a tough old lady uh, with a big heart, uh, kind of worked with them and been working with them for many, many years before any of this ever became apparent, uh, but uh, has had great success in starting the thing. And then uh, because there was evidence of it down there, the state paid enough attention to then go find them land up the valley. And they relocated, they took the, the, the model of being responsible um, for temporary shelters, for lack of a better word. Right. But in spite of it being temporary shelters, it, it's become a permanent community right. and a permanent spirit. And that, that kind of thing um, is laudable and hopeful that, that it works out. Um, in some senses, we're very lucky to be in Hawaii with a modern, um, modern society and, and all the conveniences. And yet, in another sense, uh, some of the Pacific Islands, some of the uh, places in Asia, which aren't as modern, do have a bigger sense of community, of village, uh, of self-help. And uh, um, that's one of the things I, I talk about. I haven't figured out how to help. Uh, but uh, um, the other thing I, I really do look at is all the land uh, in between Kona and, um, say, Kohala on the beach road, particularly the stuff above the expensive resorts, but it's lava land. Yeah. It's right on the road. Uh, it's got, um, that, you know, it's got convenience and, and the land is lying fallow. I, it, it, Again, back to power, politics and land, um, you needed a place to stay. And, and, and if, you, if it's land-based and it's continuous, then, you know, that doesn't get any better than that. So, I, you know, going forward, I, I'm looking at that and, and hoping uh, in my ripe old age of 99 uh, to see it happen all over the place, uh, which is what, in five years. Um, <laughs> Where do you want to go in five years, 10 years, 15 years? Where do, or, or where do you want all of us to go? What the heck? Uh, I, think we, uh, I think we need to all engage in the conversation and, and openly um, talk about um, the issue at hand, which is obviously providing more affordable housing. And I think together we can uh, uh, you know, get further along. Uh, obviously, infrastructure, water and sewer and everything else tied to different pieces of land, and especially when you look at Big Island as a whole, we have a whole bunch of land, but what, which land is tied to urban development and, and everything else. Um, so, I, I don't know, the example that you had of the ante, uh, that's a great example of, you know, it takes a village, right? You know, so it takes a village of individuals to participate in the conversation at whatever level they have, and I think the important piece is to participate in that conversation. And uh, for us um, and my goals, I, I hope that we can bring in the younger generation to be involved in the development process so they can be more familiar with the different terminologies and all the different pieces and complexities of it. And if you look at um, how development teams are formed and all the different expertise that come in all different angles, um, I, you know, we, we need the younger generation to be active in this. And so my, my goal in the next five years is, is to have those interested individuals be part of the process. And I'll do my uh, best to um, support them as a lot of mentors have supported me. And hopefully they can gain their independence and, um, and continue the fight and, uh, and provide the housing for the next generation as they, as they get older. So. Affordable housing, there's a, an endless need. So we will continue that and, and hope that we can uh, bring others along for the ride. What I've seen is, um, yeah, passion, uh, shared passion uh, is more than one plus one. It's one plus one equals three. Um, the other model I like is, uh, is mentors. Stanford's one of the great mentors. He does take time, loves his young guys. Uh, there's the family business, Gary Furuda and uh, uh, Craig Watasi, uh, both those families, uh, second generation. Kobayashi's, uh, now that I think of it, what, interesting that they've, they've gone uh, really into affordable housing. Um, 
and and um, you know they're they have legacy. They have community base. Um, it uh, it's you know it, it is it's what's special about um, being in Hawaii. Whether you're here for five years or or five hundred years, um, if, if you take what um, and God has certainly given a lot of uh, the sun and and the, the beauty and reflected outward it, it it really works well um yeah the uh the reward is there to be sure and i'm hopeful that there'll be more awards um always um eager to uh be helpful and always eager to to learn what 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 the new um uh idea about um building affordable housing so um on that note, I'm I'm finished. Do you have any last words of wisdom? Or, <clears throat> uh, uh, no, just uh, thanks again for the opportunity to be here. Uh, love talking about affordable housing. Um, huge need in our community and uh, look forward to continuing that conversation and participating at whatever level that we need to 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 make that happen. Um, and On that note, I'm, I'm about to say goodbye, but again, I'm going to harken back to Dennis Suzaki. We had his um, celebration of life on Saturday. Uh, there was a huge tent put up by Suzaki Surveying and um, Engineering. Uh, <clears throat> Sons of Hawaii came out with his motorcycle covered with flowers. And, uh, um, and then in the midst of it, a helicopter flew by and dumped a bunch of flowers. Uh, everybody jumped on their motorcycles, so you were drowned out by huge noise. Um, and uh, they came to honor somebody that gave, and not not just gave generally. He gave individually. He would be somebody, you know, who would help you with a driveway, uh, run a line between here and there, talk about where the sewer was, the water capacity. Um, what would make Hawaii a better place? He was always getting me in trouble to say, why don't you just go testify, Ricky? And uh, sometimes I'd have to check who was on what side or the other before I stuck my foot in their mouth. Uh, but again, Dennis, um, uh, we said goodbye to you uh, on Saturday, but we'll never forget you. Uh, so thank you very much and all my aloha. <laughs>